and welcome to today's Live Alts class. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Central Europe here in Budapest. I hope everybody is having a great week so far. Hi, Shiro Jidin. Hi, Alex Joseph, Ali Raza. Nice to see many of our regular students in the class. Welcome, Nishant. Good to see our members in here as well. Hi, Z. Nice to see you frequently in these classes these days. Good for you. Uh, students, we are looking at IELTS listening today. We're going to practice and discuss answers and how to get those high band scores in the listening section. Welcome, Carolina, Sammy. Nice to have more members joining in. Rashika. Students, uh, we will use aehelp.com today. This lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com. For academic IELTS success, visit us there. Join our full course. For the general IELTS, check us out at gieltshelp.com on both of our websites. We have lots and lots of materials to help you. Also, you can download and link the apps to the websites, Academic IELTS Help links to aehelp.com, uh, General IELTS Help links to gieltshelp.com, and you can get a really integrated learning experience where you can learn from home, from your PC, and really progress to get those high band scores on your IELTS exam and be confident. If you have questions, just send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com and I will gladly answer those questions in the order I receive them. Um, if you'd like to follow these lessons uh, with uh, our hard copy paper books, you can order our exam books uh, from Amazon. Search for AE Helps Academic IELTS or GE Helps General IELTS on Amazon and you can order the digital or hard copy versions. So right now, listening part one and listening part two. Uh, students, I'm going to get right into this. So we're going to start with listening part one. I'm going to play the audio from our website. And while I do this, uh, answer the questions, of course, just like in the real IELTS, you listen and answer at the same time. Uh, so this is our academic IELTS website here with the blue background. I'm just going to go into the My Student account where we have all of our materials, including the audio CDs. And this audio is coming out of uh, CD for track four. So uh, students, while I play the audio, uh, just make sure that you uh, put your answers into a separate document or on a piece of paper. Don't put your answers in the chat uh, just so that it gives a chance for everybody to answer and they don't get confused with wrong answers. So give everybody a chance um, and don't confuse other students. Uh, and then we will go through the answers together after we finish listening part one. Okay, I know it's a bit bright right now, but it's going to be okay in a second. Um, and uh, if it's quiet for you, use a headset um, and turn up the volume on your end. Okay, so again, uh, this is test four, listening part one. Get ready for this. Here we go. All right, thank you for your patience, everyone. Uh, that was a bit of a tricky fix, but got it done and the show must go on. So uh, here we go, uh, test four. We're gonna do the listening here. Um, lots of time for you to prepare your pencil, your paper, your document. Again, don't put it in the chat, just put it on a separate piece of paper. Uh, here we go, get ready. If it's quiet for you, turn up the volume and uh, Use a headset. This recording is copyrighted by Two Think One Solutions Inc. and World ESL Tutors. You will hear several different recordings and you will answer questions on what you hear. There will be time given to read the instructions and questions and you will be given a chance to check your work. 
The recordings will be played only once. Made up of four sections. At the end of the test, you will have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. Now turn to section one. Listening section one. You will hear a conversation between a student and a university administrator. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. You will see that there is an example. This time only, the conversation relating to this question will be played. Oh, hi there. Is this the University Registrar's Office? Yes, it is. I'm Deborah Reed, the University's Assistant Registrar. What can I help you with today? Great. Thank you for seeing me today, Ms. Reed. I have a few concerns about my registration for the upcoming semester. The student says she has concerns about registration. So B has been indicated for you. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to five. Oh, hi there. Is this the University Registrar's Office? Yes, it is. I'm Deborah Reed, the University's Assistant Registrar. What can I help you with today? Great. Thank you for seeing me today, Ms. Reed. I have a few concerns about my registration for the upcoming semester. Certainly. What can I help you with? Sorry, what was your name again, Ms? Anderson. Melanie Anderson. And well, my first question concerns my student record. I'm beginning my second year of uni, but my first didn't go so well. You're worried about your marks then, Ms. Anderson, and how they impact your registration status. Exactly. I don't know my precise average, but it is not good. Could you look into this for me? Absolutely. Could you please spell your last name for me? I've seen it spelt with either an E or an O in the final syllable. It's an E. A-N-D-E-R-S-E-N. -E -E My family ancestry is Swedish. Right then. And the next piece of information I need is your student registration number. Okay, um, oh... It seems I've left my student identification with my registration number on it in the car. Can I give you some other piece of information or identification? Yes, you can. Along with your surname, I can find your account with your date of birth. Great. It's the 20th of August, 1997. The 20th of August, 1997? Yeah. All right. Let's see your account then. Okay, here it is. Well, I see what you mean about your marks. These are certainly not ideal. However, your average level necessary to proceed to year two of your program. However, I do see there's a whole See, I thought that was because of my marks. No, it's not. It's actually because you have unpaid library fines. Library fines? Yes. During the past year, you must have been tardy in the city library. Registering that. Six pounds twenty. Well, I suppose it's only You now have some time to look at questions six to ten. Now listen to the rest of the interview and answer questions 6 to 10. Well, now that that is out of the way, I did have another concern. I need advice on what modules to take in my first semester. I'm in the BA Art History program, 
but as you can see from my record, I failed a class which is a prerequisite for two modules I'm supposed to take this semester. Yes, it looks like that's right. It was Art History 1270 that you failed. Is that right? 1270. Yes, I took it with Professor Calder. I found his teaching style did not match my learning style. Right. Well, that Art History class is indeed a prerequisite for both Art History 2170 and 2260. Yes, and that's what I said earlier. Is there anything that can be done? Well, Miss Anderson, I think there is. Here's what we'll do. We'll register you in the module you failed last year, and then we'll put you in Art History 2240, which counts towards your degree in place of 2260. 2240 has no prerequisite, however. But what about the 2170 class? Yes, well, that's where we'll have to be creative. Are you comfortable taking an extra class in the spring semester? Yes, I think so. Good. We will register you in 1270 and 2240 in the fall, and then register you in 2170 in the spring. Great. And one final question. Is Professor Calder teaching Art History 1270 again this autumn? Yes, he is, but I've put you in Professor Hennessy's section instead. I think you'll be more successful. That is the end of section one. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. Okay, students. Uh, yeah, I do read the chat a lot, but uh, I can't catch everything on there. Um, so you were saying the, uh, the sound was crackling a little bit. Is it still crackling when I'm speaking or not? Let me know. Um, anyway, uh, let me check that. Okay, here. I can probably fix that. Okay, so let me know um, if uh, my voice is crackling still. And uh, if not, that's fine. Okay. All right, so uh, we'll go through these answers. If you didn't get all of them or if it was crackling a little bit, don't panic. It's fine. Um, again, doing the best we can. Okay. All right. So you're saying it's clear now and my voice is okay. That's fine. Um, all right. Uh, so um, let's see. How are we doing for time? Um, if you'd like, I can replay this audio one more time. Does anybody want me to replay the audio? Give you a second chance, a second listen. I mean, at the end of the day, um, it's always good to listen as much as possible. All right, I'm getting a lot of no's, so I'm going to stick with the no then. Okay, we'll go through the answers, and it should be clear for part two. Uh, with part one, even if it's not 100% clear, you should be able to still get a fairly uh, high score because it's fairly simple. So as long as you can make out the audio, um, you should be okay. Uh, let's, uh, let's go over this. So I saw that a couple people in the chat said, stop scrolling at the beginning, um, but that wasn't by accident. So uh, one of the first tips is when you're listening to the instructions in the paper-based or computer-based test, uh, you should scroll in the computer-based or you should flip to part two and check just the beginning to see what it's about. So I went to part two because I was looking to see if I can catch the topic. So here it said approximately how long will the tour be? Okay, is the question, all right? And then um, I looked at the next question and it said, what are the four features of the resort? Okay, all right. So if I look at these two questions, I can figure out that part two is probably some kind of a tour on a resort, okay? So I want to figure that out during the uh, instruction time. Is everybody clear on that now? So why I was scrolling, I saw a couple of people say, oh, stop scrolling, but that was on purpose. That wasn't by accident. I didn't lose my marbles and get all crazy and out of control. Um, I was looking to see if I can get an idea of the next sections just to kind of let my brain start turning that information and visualizing because part one is fairly simple and I'm a bit more worried about the topics of part two and part three. Okay, and I see Carolina giving the thumbs up of, yeah, I get that. Okay. Z says, yeah, that's probably some new viewers. Um, yeah, you know, and that's, uh, why I'm saying that, Z, because I know that there's some new people out there. Um, so uh, section three, 
I again looked at kind of the professors, so Dr. Henry Gergen, Gloria Mesto, so it's two professors, so it's going to be some kind of a, a conversation. And then um, here, the next one is, which three of the following are given against zoos? So arguments against zoos, okay? Um, I can see animals and zoos and these professors. So I can get the idea that section three or part three is going to be talking about uh, zoos and it will be a debate or an argument about zoos between two professors. Okay. All right. Uh, sweet, sweet. It looks like most people don't want the audio to be replayed. They just want to keep going forward. So we're going to keep going forward. But if anybody really wants to listen to this audio, um, you can do that from the website. Okay. All right. Um, and then section four, uh, I noticed right away that it's this kind of a flow diagram here or um, information. And the first bit that I read here is the loggerhead turtle has to seek dry land. So right away, I got an idea that this uh, is about the turtle or the loggerhead turtle, okay? All right, so that's why I looked at these first couple questions of each part while the instructions uh, were going for part one. Is everybody clear on that now? So that's a very effective strategy and there's no rule that says don't look at the first questions on the next parts, okay? If the examiner says don't turn the page, then just say, okay, sorry, and go back to part one. But they usually don't do that, and most students can get away with looking at the topics of part two, three, and four that will be much more challenging than part one, okay? So everybody's clear on that now, okay? Very, very useful, okay? That can save you a half a band score to do that instead of being surprised by the topics one at a time, okay? All right. Um, also, uh, please note that uh, from this year, they don't say section one. Um, they say part one for each part, and they don't have an example in part one anymore. They just start into the audio, okay? All right. So let's look at these questions. We'll go through the answers and then we'll do part two. Uh, for multiple choice, you're always listening for the answer. You're not trying to stare at the answer. You're trying to listen for the answer. So uh, number one, in which year of university is the student enrolled in? And Abdu Kolimov says B. It's uh, the second year of school. Yeah, <clears throat> absolutely. So um, the student says, I'm trying to register um, for my classes in my second year of university, which means that they're enrolled in second year. But they're having trouble registering. So this is B. So you put B in your answer sheet and you move on. And what is the student most concerned about? What is she, uh, what's her biggest problem? Why is she, why is she a little bit uh, freaking out? So what's, what's her... What's her biggest problem? Is it her marks, her registration status, or her identification? Okay. Number two is she's most concerned. Okay. She's most concerned about her registration status. Okay. All right. Um, she says her marks are not very good, but she's not... She's, she's worried about her marks, but she's most concerned about her registration status because she feels that she cannot register for classes, okay? So um, remember the rest of the conversation. So why, cannot, why can she not register for classes? Why is she having problems registering for, for classes, okay? Vaishak says, how is it be? Okay, well... If you listen to the rest of the interview, that helps you, okay? So never close doors. Always keep your mind a little bit open until they finish that section. Um, if you're still not sure, students, you can always check the transcripts at the back of the book um, to get more clarity, okay? So let me show you this. Uh, the transcripts are, of course, the dialogue. And in our books and in, the, in good IELTS materials, 
you will always have this in the back of the book where it basically shows you. So here on page 110 of our book, it gives you the dialogue. So it says, oh, hi there. Is this the university registrar's office? So they're talking. And then here's questions one to five. Okay. So um, here's the answer for number one. Melanie says, I'm beginning my second year of uni, but my first didn't go so well. So we know that she's registered for second year from this sentence. Okay. And then here, Deborah says, you are worried about your marks then, Miss Anderson, and how they impact your registration status. So here is the key, right? She's worried about her marks, but mostly she's worried about her registration status. It's a tricky one. And we realize later that it's not because of her marks. Okay. So that's number two. So you can always check the transcripts. Okay. All right. Paramjeet, good job on your score. Um, thank you for coming back and sharing. Okay, so let's go back to the questions. Uh, and here's a simple fill in the form. Okay, um, so what is her name? It's Melanie something. She spells it out. Uh, so make sure that you practice this kind of spelling the name. Okay, um, it's Anderson, and she spells it because she says it's spelled with an E instead of an O. So it's Anderson, Anderson. Okay, and she says A N D E R S E N. It's an E instead of an O. Okay. Yeah, or not an A, but an E. Okay. All right. So, uh, Melanie Anderson, you can write all capital. You cannot write all small letters because this is a name. Okay. Uh, what's her birthday? Again, practice writing these in simple ways. Okay. Um, very good, uh, Mirzahan or as Galin. It's 20th of August. The easiest way to write this answer is AUG20. Okay, you will get that correct. AUG20, right? Abbreviation, and you don't need the TH. So, or you can do it like this as well 20 AUG. Okay, that's fine as well. Right? They will give you the marks for that. Okay, good job, Rashika. That's the right answer. Okay, then we find out the reason she cannot register for her classes is because she has some library fines. Now, I noticed that I'm already given the sign for pounds. Um, how much uh, does she owe the library? Abdu Kolikyov says six. It's not quite six. It's a little bit more than that. Okay. Um, pay attention. Oftentimes, you have some pence as well, okay? It's rarely round numbers. Andri Uzkov says it's six pounds 20, and that's correct. So it's six pounds 20, okay? It's not a round number, a comedy with India. It's not euros, it's pounds, okay? You don't need the symbol because it's given in the question, all right? Ali says there was a cracking in the voice there. All right, yeah, okay, so you couldn't hear it, but you got the six part, right? Good, all right, many of you are like, but there was a crack. Um, by the way, if uh, there's a problem with the audio in the IELTS exam, immediately you should notify the uh, proctor that there's a problem with the audio. Don't wait until the exam is over, but be sure that there's a problem with the audio, okay? It can happen, so technology is not perfect. Um, people are not perfect, these things happen. All right, um, so don't be shy. Don't wait until the end of it and say, but there was an a problem in the, in the audio. As soon as there's problems in the audio, put up your hand and say, sorry, there's a problem with the audio. You got to do something, okay? All right. All right, um, so um, what program is this student enrolled in? She very clearly says this. So she's in the second year of BA Art History. That's right, so... Bachelor of Arts, Art History. Uh, you don't necessarily need the BA, just Art History is fine. OK. 
okay? If you put BA, that's okay. Um, art history is fine, okay? All right, um, now here you had to match the information A, B, C with the numbers 7, 8, 9, so questions 7, 8, 9. Uh, so we have to match the classes with the number with the correct description. So class 2170, which is second year, um, in your syllabus or in your um, uh, calendar for university uh, or college, the first number will always be the year. Okay, so if it's a two, it means it's a second year class. If it's a one, it means it's a first year class. If it's a three, it's a third year class. If it's a zero, it's a high school class, okay? It's an equivalency class. So uh, number seven is B, yep. Yeah. She's going to take that in the spring. Uh, number eight, so An says, oh, okay, I got it. And oh, if it's a five, then it means it's a postgraduate class for master's and PhD students, okay? Four is fourth year. Um, okay, so uh, number two is a, yep, taken and failed. She failed 1270. And um, what is the last one? So number nine, 2260. Well, there's only one left, so reason stands that it's C. She's not going to take 2260. Uh, bonus question, anybody catch what class she's going to take instead of 2260? So what class is she taking instead of 2260? Anybody get that one? This is, uh, I'm just checking to see how carefully people are listening, how well you recall uh, this, uh, this information. So she said you should take this class instead of this one. It wasn't 3360. I didn't quite catch it, to be honest with you. I believe it was like 240. Four seven zero. I remember it was two four something. It was two four something something. Okay, so uh, that's what uh, she's taking instead of two two six zero, along with one two seven zero in the fall. Alex says it was two four six zero. Okay, thank you. All right, Alex, good job. Okay, and question ten, last one for this part. Um, the student is registered for uh, 1270 with the same professor as she previously had, so as in the class that she failed, yes or no? Uh, true or false? Number 10. It is false. The administrator says, yes, he's teaching the class, but I registered you with a different professor. So it's B, it's false. I put you in... Dr. Hennessy's class or something like that, okay? All right, students, add up your marks for part one. Now, I know the sound was crackling a little bit, so uh, maybe give yourself an extra mark if you missed the question about the pounds, but um, it, it sh your, your marks should be um, nine to 10 out of 10 on, uh, on this part, okay? All right. Um, Abdul Kolikov, yeah, so if you didn't get that 20 pence because you couldn't hear it, no worries, right? Give yourself that mark. That's fine, all right? If you got over eight or eight, you're okay. If you got less than eight and you feel like, well, I kind of heard the answers, I just didn't get them, you got to practice, okay? You need to get a really high mark for part one because part two, three, and four definitely become more challenging, okay? So, all right, um, so, and let's, Let's do that now, so hopefully the uh, audio is not going to crackle. I've fixed everything <laughs> in the last few minutes for the audio setup. So um, let, me, uh, let me just start the audio for part two, and then we'll go through that. Uh, and same thing for the part two audio. Um, put your answers into a separate document or into a, on a separate paper, not into the chat, just so everybody can um, get the answers on their own, okay? All right, so here we go with part two. Now we know that part two is going to be some kind of a tour on a resort, okay? Again, this audio is coming from aehelp.com. So here we go, let's uh, get into it with part two. All right. 
Uh, again, turn up the volume. Uh, I'm just going to double check here, but I believe my volume is maxed out on my end. Indeed it is. So if it's quiet for you, you need to turn up the volume on your end. Here we go. All right, students, with part two. Now turn to section two. Take some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Listening, section two. You will hear a woman showing a group of people around an all-inclusive resort hotel. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Now, listen carefully to the interview. I'd like to welcome all of you to the White Sands Five Star Resort here in beautiful Varadero, Cuba. Today, I'm going to show you the fine features you'll get to experience during your stay here at White Sands. Before we begin, does anyone have any questions? Hi there. Yes, I have a quick question. Toby, I have to meet the rest of my family for lunch in an hour. Not a problem, sir. The tour will take no more than 30 minutes. If after this time anyone wants more details on any of the resort's features, I can help them out individually. Any other questions? No? Well, let's get started then. White Sands covers 10 acres of land, including direct access to over 250 metres of pristine Caribbean coastline. It is perfectly safe to swim in the waters here at White Sands, but do be on the lookout for jellyfish in the water. They are not deadly, but their sting does much. As we pass through the lobby, I want you to take note of the main bar area on your left. The bar is open from 11 in the morning each day and closes at 1 o'clock a.m. each night. As we proceed down the main path, you'll see four apartment buildings, marks A and B on your left, and C and D on your right. Between buildings C and D on your right is one of our finest restaurants featuring traditional Cuban cuisine. We have seven restaurants in all at once. I have a question. Go ahead. In our brochure, I read that we are only entitled to five restaurant visits per week we stay at the resort. Is that right? Yes, that's right. The restaurants are only open for dinner and reservations are mandatory. You will be able to make reservations at the end of this tour or any time before five this evening. When you are not dining at the restaurants, you may eat at either of our two buffet restaurants and dinner. Additionally, there is a night cafe, which is open until 4 a.m. Does the resort have a nightclub for dancing? Yes, of course. We have a discotheque located at the end of the main resort path. This is, of course, for noise reasons. at 3 a.m. early the next morning. Last call for drinks is at 2.45. You now have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. Now listen to the rest of the interview and answer questions 17 to 20. I'd like to take you down to the beach and show you some of the facilities and services we offer. As we approach the beach, you'll notice the brilliant white sand that our resort is named after. The sand is incredibly fine and is lovely to walk on in your bare feet. Now you can see to your left is one of our beach bar facilities. There is also another beach at 100 metres to your right. These bars serve beer and cocktails from noon until 4.30 in the afternoon. On your right is a small cafe serving snack food items during the same opening hours as the beach bar. And straight ahead of us is our beach changing facility, where you can change into your swimming costume, use the toilet or have a shower. Are there any water sports included in our holiday package? Good question. Yes, there are. You have unlimited access to our skim boards, surfboards and beach sports equipment, such as beach volleyball and football. 
Additionally, you may sign up for windsurfing at our activity desk, located adjacent to the resort lobby. Finally, you may also register for our weekly water polo tournament, which is held each Friday afternoon at half past two. Does anyone else? And always use that time, students, to check your answers. I'm just going to stop the audio here. Make sure you didn't miss any questions or misread the instructions. I made it a bit darker for us so you could see that uh, kind of map style question. Um, we'll go back and we'll answer these questions together here. Uh, all right, so let's do this. So here we have part two. Let me just brighten it up a tad. There we go. All right. Uh, voice is crackling again. Hey, let's interesting. All right. Hopefully it'll be clear. Um, not sure why the, the audio suddenly does that. It could be the setup. It could be the stream. Anyway, um, let's do this. So uh, here we go. Um, part two. Uh, let's uh, talk about this here. Number 11, approximately how long will the tour be according to the tour guide? So one of the men in the tour says, uh, I got to meet my family. How long is this tour? And then she answers, uh, it'll take about 30 minutes. And 30 minutes is about half an hour. So the correct answer there was C. Notice how it was paraphrased. So the man actually, or the woman actually says half an hour, or sorry, uh, 30 minutes. And uh, the answer is half an hour. Okay, so you have to be able to identify that paraphrasing. Okay, now this type of question here can be really tricky. Um, what are the four features of the resort? So here, when you hear this, you should be taking notes, okay? So when you see this kind of question, take notes and then match it up, all right? So um, what are the correct answers here? Now, the notes that you should have uh, got are something like 24-hour bar, okay? That's definitely one that I remember. Um, also, uh, buildings uh, A, B, C, D. Okay, I got that. Um, couple of buffets, restaurants. Okay, so these would be my notes. Okay, uh, and then as I write my notes afterwards, I could have matched up all of these. So let's see uh, what you got. Now, uh, she said that there is a night cafe, so A is a good choice. Um, and uh, four apartment buildings, A, B, C, D. So D is a good choice. Um, e, she said a number of restaurants. Uh, in my notes, I would have actually had seven restaurants. Okay. Um, and I probably would have just written rest, seven rest dot. Okay. And then the last one, the final one, would have been direct uh, beach access. She said walk directly to the beach. Okay. So the correct answers were A, D, E, and G in any order. And this is four questions. So A, D, E, and G. Uh, she says that there's jellyfish there, but she said the jellyfish are not deadly. Okay, so I know that that's not possible for those of you who thought B was one of the answers. So, um, yeah, so there you go. So A, D, E, and G. Any one of those that you got right, you would get one point. Again, remember, take notes. 24-hour uh, bar, it's not a 24-hour Cuban restaurant. She says there is a Cuban restaurant, but it's not a 24-hour Cuban restaurant. It's a 24-hour bar that she mentions, okay? So you have to be careful, and you have to pay attention to details. A bar is not a restaurant. A bar serves alcohol. A bar does not serve food. Okay, so that's why taking notes is a smart way to do it because it's really difficult to read and match that quickly. All right, so I would definitely take notes in this case. All right, okay, um, so uh, what time is the last call at the discotheque? Is it A, 8 p.m., B, 2.45 a.m., or C, 3 a.m.? Okay, yeah, number 16 was B. 
Okay, so it closes at 3 a.m. and last call is 15 minutes before closing time. So B was the correct answer. Good job, uh, Moria, Nuridin, Zafar, Carolina. Well done. Okay. All right. Uh, so this was a little bit tricky. I had to darken up the screen because you can't really see the the organization of the bars and the cafe and the entrance. Um, so it kind of came down to either A or D. She says that there's an entrance to the left, to the right, there's a beach bar. And then she says that the cafe is to the right. Uh, so hopefully all of you got that the answer here was D. The only difference between A and D was the cafe. And you had to hear that this is on the right side. Okay, so on the right side was the cafe. All right, so it's D. Okay, of course, in the real exam, this will be a little bit easier for you because you're not using a giant projector uh, to uh, see the pages. It's a little bit more challenging for me. However, keep in mind that uh, I'm helping you a little bit here because I can hear the answers and I'm moving to the next question uh, when I hear the answers. So in the real exam, you don't have that help. So you have to be very careful to make sure that you don't get lost in the audio. Okay. All right. Okay. So the beach bars serve beer and cocktails from noon until what time in the afternoon? Did anybody catch that? Anybody catch when the beach bar uh, stops serving? So from noon, if you had to guess, what might you guess? Moria says it's four o'clock. Okay. Yeah, that's not a bad guess, Moria. It wasn't quite four o'clock, but you're close. Lubna says 2.30. It was 4.30. Okay, that's fine. So it wasn't clear. So that was 4.30. Uh, in addition to the small cafe on the beach, we also offer a changing... Uh, what is this? Even if you didn't hear it, even if it was cracking, um, you can probably guess this. Okay. Changing what? If you've ever been to the UK. Okay, Moria says rooms. Um, yeah, so Moria, in the US or Canada, you would hear rooms, changing rooms. Um, but in the UK, they say changing facilities. Okay. Or a changing facility. Correction, because there's an ah. So changing facility, okay, All right? Okay, uh, where you can change in and out of your swimming costume. We also offer plenty of sports at the resort, whether it's skimboarding, beach volleyball, football, windsurfing, or our once a week uh, water polo tournament. Okay, so that was water polo tournament for number 20. Okay, uh, so students, add up your scores. My apologies for the slight technical challenges in today's class, but um, that's the nature of technology. Sometimes it happens. Uh, I will be back tomorrow to do parts three and parts four uh, with you, okay? Uh, for those of you that have access to our websites, um, make sure to review the audio. This is test four, okay, from the second book. Um, for those of you that don't, you can always join our websites, aehelp.com for academic and gialshelp.com for general. The listening sections are the same because they're the same for general and for academic. Um, for those of you that uh, hung in there and stayed, even though there were a couple of challenging situations in today's class, good for you. That's the kind of attitude that you need for success on the IELTS exam and in life, okay? You should never give up when you have some difficulties. You should always look for solutions and persevere. It's an extremely important skill, especially in today's world. So keep that in mind. That's my final note for today. And hopefully I will see all of you uh, tomorrow for some writing and more speaking. Have a wonderful rest of your day. If it's late in your country, get some rest and wake up refreshed and full of energy.